Hey, this is Ryan with Willwood Disc Brakes, and today we're going to be installing this big brake kit on this 2003 Jeep Wrangler. This brake kit requires you to go from your factory TJ spindle to a spindle off a 87 to 89 YJ. The bracket will bolt up here and will not bolt up to your factory TJ spindle. Before you start, read all instructions and warnings. If you don't know what you're doing, leave it to a professional. Flex lines are not included with this kit. Contact us for the specific flex line kit for your vehicle. Now that we got the Jeep up in the air and the wheels and tires off, let's go ahead and remove the factory brakes. Our first step of the disassembly is going to be to remove the caliper. This is done by removing the two bolts that hold it to the knuckle. Pull the caliper off the rotor and hang it over to the side. Our next step is going to be to remove the rotor. Just as a reminder, this kit will not work with your factory TJ spindles. You will need a 87 to 89 YJ Jeep Wrangler spindle. To remove the spindle, start by removing the tie rod end. If you give the spindle a little shock with a hammer, it'll drop the ball joint right out. Go ahead and remove the cotter pin, take this castle nut washer off and the nut behind it. To remove the hub from the spindle, there will be three bolts holding it on. Remove the hub from the axle by pulling it straight out. Save this and the dust shield for installation on the new spindle. Pull the axle out of the axle housing. Our last step of the disassembly is to remove the two cotter pins and nuts holding the spindle onto the axle housing. Leave the nut on the ball joint just a little bit when you hit the spindle with the hammer so it doesn't drop all the way off. Now just as you did for the tie rod, give the spindle couple blows right here and it should drop right out. Fully remove the nut and remove the spindle. To install your YJ spindle, slide it back over the two ball joints and secure them with the nuts. Torque them both to manufacturer specifications. Install a new cotter pin in each of the ball joints. Reinstall the axle shaft into the housing. The factory dust shield will need to be modified. Refer to kit instructions for specifics. Make sure to wear proper safety equipment. Remove any sharp edges. If you don't have a full machine shop at your disposal, a grinder or a file will work. Install the modified dust shield in the hub back over the axle shaft. Install the bolts that hold the hub onto the spindle. Tighten the bolts up. Torque to manufacturer specifications. Reinstall the axle nut and components. Start with the flat washer, then the nut. Go ahead and hand tighten, and then torque the nut down to manufacturer specs. followed by the spring washer and the castle nut washer. Remember to install a new cotter pin with this.
reinstall the tie rod into the spindle and retain it using the factory nut. Tighten and torque this down to manufacturer specs as well. Once more, remember to install a new cotter pin. We're going to start the installation process by grabbing the caliper mounting bracket bolts, put a washer on it, slide it through the ears of the spindle, and initially place two of the 33 thousandths shims on each of the bolts. and install the mounting bracket. To install the rotor and hat, start by placing the hat face down and slide the rotor on top of it. Apply red Loctite to the mounting bolts and hand tighten them. Snug all the bolts down in a crisscross pattern. Once they're snug down, torque them to the kit specifications in a crisscross pattern. Before installing the rotor, slide the registration ring over the hub. Make sure it sits flushly on the hub. Then take your rotor and install it. Secure it using three lug nuts. Slide the caliper over the bracket mounting studs and temporarily tighten it down with the supplied nut and washer. As you can see, we are not centered over the rotor. Adjust your shim count to make sure your caliper is centered over your rotor. Once your caliper is centered over the rotor, go ahead and take the mounting bolts for the bracket out and red Loctite them and torque them to kit specifications. Reinstall your rotor and secure it with the lug nuts. Slide the pads in with the friction material facing the rotor. Retain the pads in the caliper with the caliper bridge bolt. Tighten this bolt down to where there is no play. Once the pads have been installed in the caliper, you can see that the rotor height is taller than the pad height, so we need to adjust our caliper upwards to get them even. Start with two shims over the mounting studs for the caliper. Reinstall your caliper. Now that the top of the pad and the top of the rotor are even height, go ahead and torque the mounting nuts. Torque these down as per the instruction sheet.
install PTFE tape on the pipe thread end of the caliper fitting. Install the pipe thread end into the caliper. Install one end of the flex line onto the fitting. Go ahead and tighten this down. Start by removing the hard line into the flex line. Pull the line out and put a vacuum cap on it. This will prevent the master cylinder from losing all of its fluid. Remove the bolt holding the factory soft line to the frame. Make sure to save this bolt as it will be reused. Then go ahead and fully remove the caliper. Install the supplied bracket with the OE bolt. Install the supplied chassis fitting into the bracket. Go ahead and bend the hard line to fit in there. Install the other end of the flex line into the chassis fitting. Make sure to remove all the brake fluid as it will damage painted surfaces. Push the chassis fitting up into the bracket and retain it using the supplied clip. Rotate the assembly from side to side and check for interference. Make sure the flex line is carefully routed to prevent contact with moving suspension, brake, and wheel components. All right, now that you've got the brakes installed, it's very important that you bleed them as check for leaks and also bed them in as per our instructions.